Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, welcome back to episode three of the Road to Pro School. So, a couple of things. Um, this week I had the pleasure of meeting another subscriber who invited me for a game and played at St. Enadoc, which is arguably one of the best Lynx courses in Cornwall. Um, it's probably a toss up between Travaux and St. Enadoc. Uh, depends what you like. Uh, some people prefer Travaux, some people prefer St. Enadoc. For me, I think it's the best Lynx course in, in Cornwall, but I've not played Travaux recently, so I'll, I'll reserve judgment a little bit on that. Um, and I actually played really well. So I've actually dropped 2.4 shots on that round. So I'm going to open up the England Golf app and screen record this to show you what I'm doing to take advantage of the new system. So my home golf course, if I open up uh, my last game at Whitsand Bay, which was there, which was counting until this round, the course rating is 68.9 on a par 70. So the rating is 1.1 shot under par. Then with a slope index of 118, that being quite low, it means that if I go round, so I went round at this time in 82, um, because you do net double bogeys for ones you messed up, and I messed up 17 and 18 on that, so net double bogey um, was 12 over par. And the score difference, if we look here, is 11.5. So it was only half a shot better than standard scratch par, basically, is what that's kind of saying. So I'm going and playing high rated courses because if I have a good round or if I go round in nine over par, which was my handicap back then, um, before I played St. Enadoc, then it will be like a net seven over par because of the course rating. So it reduces my handicap. It gives me a better score. Um, the system's there and I'm using it to my advantage, basically. Uh, so if we look at the St. Enadoc score here at the top, I had a 74, which was, uh, what is, par so it's a par 69 so I was five over par with the net 74 but if you look at the score difference it's 0.8 so it was only 0.8 shots worse than like standard scratch par so because of that because I played off 10 at the time I actually got I think it was like 11 shots or 12 shots and because I went round in five over par which was actually 0.8 over par I was like effectively like nine under what I should have been shooting on my handicap. And as a result, I got a massive drop. I went from 9.5 to 7.1 um, with a 74 gross. And that's with eight, nine, 10 and 11. I had a bit of a head off moment. Uh, 10's a par four. I thought it was a par five. So I hit an iron, uh, was just in the rough. Instead of trying to do something stupid and go for the green, I was like, it's par five. So I just chipped out and that left me, I think about 200 yards in. Um, and then it was at that point, someone, my partner, the guy, the, the subscriber who I was with was like, Lee, you know, it's a par four, don't you? And I was like, no, it's a par five. So my head went, um, tried to then play a stupid recovery shot, put it out right at the green. And then it just, it turned into a six. So it was a double bogey. Um, and if I'd have known it was a par four, I probably would have played it differently. But I have to look at the positives. A 74 around St. Enadoc is a great score. There was no wind, completely still day, bright sunshine. Course was running great. It was a little bit soft. So it was as good a conditions as you're ever going to play that golf course, basically. Um, and I took advantage of that. If I've played St. Enadoc before in the wind, in the rain, it is brutal. And that 74 would probably have been a 94 in those conditions. So I took advantage of those conditions. Um, and that has resulted in a drop down to 7.1 uh, because that was effectively a par round, give or take 0.8 shots. So that's what I'm doing. And if you look down, Mullion was uh, a competition round that was there open. I shot an 80, which was 10 over par, but because of the difficulty of the course, it was an 8.1, so it was two shots better. Um, and obviously at the Belfry, I was eight over par, but because of the difficulty, it was 5.7. So I'm going and playing difficult golf courses on the hope I have a good round or, or knowing that if I play to handicap, I'm actually going to reduce my handicap because of the course difficulty. So it takes a little bit of pressure off. Whereas if I play at Whitsand Bay and I shoot five over, I'm effectively five over. So that's seven handicap. I have to shoot 
four or five under, four or five over to get a drop. So you see where I'm using the system to benefit me basically. And if you want to reduce your handicap, that's something you can do now with this new app is get somebody who's a member of a golf course to be the attester to your round and sign it off basically on the app and you can reduce your handicap. Um, the system's there. Why not use the system to benefit you? Go and play difficult courses or if you're a member of a difficult course, whatever, but play difficult courses. Try and play to your handicap. If you play to your handicap, you're going to reduce your handicap because of the rating of the course and the, the slope rating of the course. Use it. It's there. That's what I'm doing. Uh, and it's what a lot of people do. They, if their home course is a pretty low slope rated course, why not go and play more difficult courses on the hope you have a good round? And that's what I'm doing, using the system to benefit me. But what that's done is obviously given me, it's now 0.7 away from the 6.4 target that I was aiming for to then progress to go pro in August. But, um, so I've spoke, I've had an email from the PJ and there's a couple of requirements and then I had a phone call with Dan afterwards. So if you go pro between 4.4 handicap and 6.4 handicap, then you have to play 21 pro rounds in the year. There's no playability test anymore. You have to play 21 pro rounds within the three years of the degree, but you have to shoot four rounds of four over or better within those, within those three years. If you go in at handicap 4.4 or below, then you still have to play 21 rounds within three years, but there's no scoring requirements, so it takes the pressure off. So had a little bit of a chat with Dan and he was completely right in that I should not rush into this at 6.4 and then look at putting pressure on myself. Because let's be honest, I've only ever had two rounds in my life of four over or better. Um, and I'm not good enough at the moment to go on to the PJ Southwest to then produce four rounds of four over or better. But I still have to play those 21 rounds within those three years. And all that's going to do is put pressure on me. You know, if I miss, don't do it the first time, then don't do it the second time, then don't do it the third time, then don't do it the fourth time. Suddenly there's less and less rounds I've got left in order to score that four over. And then it puts pressure on me to then try and get it and I'm chasing it and like, I don't really want that pressure. So Dan's advice was leave it until next year, try and get your handicap down to 4.4 within the next 14 months, um, which is possible. Uh, it's completely possible, but I need to up my game because I'm not a four over par player at the moment. I've had the five over at St. Enadoc. It was benign conditions. It was a good putting day. I got off the tee well. Um, and that's what it was. It was just a really good driving day. Uh, give or take a couple of drives that just went in the in the rough. Um, I had to chip out. But if I can get off the tee well, I play well. My putting has always been the strongest part of my game. And again, at St. Edoc, it was the strongest part of my game. Um, I think I, I didn't three put once. And I one putted quite a lot of times as well. Um, so I just need to you know, get it all into one place. Uh, and Dan's right, this year probably isn't the time, unless I can get to 4.4 by the end of August, unlikely. But if I keep playing difficult courses and I come in at five over or four over around that score, then it's absolutely possible because I'm using the system to benefit me. It's what it's there for. So that's where we're at at the minute. Uh, handicap 7.1, um, bit of a shock of a jump down from 9.5. But uh, it is what it is. It was a good round and uh, I enjoyed the company with playing with the subscriber. And I've got another game booked on the 25th of July with another subscriber at Elford Lee Golf Course in Plymouth. Golf course I've actually never played considering it's in my hometown, but never played it. So I'm looking forward to that. And it's great to go out and play these different golf courses, meet the subscribers and also get a round in that I can use towards my handicap at the same time and it's being attested by subscribers to verify the process I'm doing that they can say I was there so to speak so it's uh, a win-win all the way around. Uh, one thing to talk about is I always say if I've got any X demos going up that um, I will put it up here first although when I do put it on my website it does actually tell Twitter first because it automatically goes on there 
but uh, the Cleveland clubs are now coming to the end of their cycle, so they're now winding down, ready for the new releases. Um, with that in mind, I no longer need my demo clubs here, so they are on my website at a massively reduced price. Just want to get them out, don't need them anymore, get them out so I can then bring in the new stuff. So if you're after Cleveland drivers, fairway woods or hybrids, now's the time to get them. They are hardly used. I think the three hybrid is the only one that's been really used outdoors, apart from the nine degree driver, but that's not up yet because I'm still using that for the uh, driver of 2021, but that will go up once I've finished using that, once it gets kicked out of the court, kicked out of that um, process. So if you want them, they are a bargain. I think I've put the drivers up for 150 quid. The fairway woods are 100 pound and the hybrids are 95 pound. That includes postage. So if you want that, jump on it. The Mavericks are still on there. Could keep just checking back because every time I don't need a demo club or I don't need a use set of clubs, I just shove it on there. But they are in and out normally quite quickly. So just make the most of those reduced rates because most of the demo clubs haven't been hit outdoors here. So they're practically just indoor use clubs um, and you can grab yourself a bargain. So do check that out. Uh, we've now gone past halfway on the ultimate bag fitting prize draw. So uh, if you wanna do get more tickets, then please help yourself. That's also on the website. As soon as that fills up, we will do that draw and someone will win uh, 3,000 pounds worth of Callaway clubs, basically. A complete full bag, including bag and uh, balls. So, got to be in it to win it, as they say. Um, that's just it for the time being. It's just showing you where I am. A little bit of an update on what the course is and where I think I stand when it comes to going down that PGA course or the, the degree, so to speak. And after a discussion with Dan, where I think the game will have to wait until next year unless we get to 4.4 by then, but I don't think it will happen. I'm not good enough to get down to that, I don't think. And I'm certainly not good enough to go there between 4.4 and 6.4 and play four rounds of four over or better. Now, what I might do is speak to local pros around this area and ask them if they want a game and if they're happy to vlog it, because I think that's going to be a good benchmark for me to see where I am when I take that step over and have to play those competitions, because you have to play those 21 competitions as part of the process of being a pro. Like I said, I've got no interest in being a playing pro. It's not even remotely what I want to do it for. I want to do it for the coaching and the fitting and all that lot to boost my business, but I have to play 21 rounds within those three years. So it'd be good to see playing against those on a one-on-one, -on, -one, on a medal situation, and just see exactly how far away I am from them. Um, roughly how many shots is it that they are better than me? I'm probably thinking somewhere like 10 shots better than me uh, at the current process, but it'll be nice to try that out. So I do know a couple of the local pros, so I'm gonna drop them a message and see if they're happy for me to come up to their club, play around the golf with them, and just sort of challenge myself against them, basically, and see, just see where we are. Um, again, really quick update, absolutely loving the support that you guys are giving me moving forward with this. Um, the messages of support, the PMs, the DMs, the Instagram messages are superb and I can't thank you enough for that. It does make me want to push forward with this and just ignore the haters, like whatever. If, uh, if you feel like you've got nothing better to do with your life, then you crack on. But that'll leave that there. If you do like this video, give it a thumbs up. Please do subscribe to the channel. Little button down below, free to do, and follow me on this journey to pro school. But for the time being, I'll see you all soon.